Keep doing what we're doing. Got a collection of our monsters. Oh, I wish I have no monies. No monies, more problems. To all enemies. I actually can't afford that. I might get it. Oh, that's even better. Three, though. Damage. Eight fire damage. Six wins. I can't afford any of these. I can afford these two. Freeze the full discreter. I should just give it to her, huh? I think that's a good idea. Okay. quick. I'm trying to see if I can get football to load. This thing's like so hit and miss. Like something about Fubo. is not like football on my little tablet. I don't have any problem with Amazon Prime though, which is weird. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Whatever else I want to watch. You see a lone tent pitched in the middle of the desert. You approach it and peer inside, but nobody's home. Hmm. Surely a circus performer must be around here somewhere. Help! A mysterious voice calls from who knows where. You look around once more, but see no signs of life. Help! There it is again, clearer this time. So you're gonna watch you football. turn like soccer. and look behind you. Oh, I just can't watch. There's a severed head in the sand. Or at least 
It looks severed, but it's alive? The head frantically beseeches you for aid. Like much, like everything but Apparently it hid in the sand so during a monster attack and could not free itself afterward. You all grab hold and pull in an attempt to dislodge the perhaps not disembodied head. And wouldn't you know it, it was attached to a young man who performs in the circus. Wouldn't you know it. He helpfully informs you that there are two others who were separated from the troop during the attacks. He says they, too, may have hidden or otherwise disguised themselves. You resume your search, eyes primed to pick out anything unusual. There's a strip you open it to find a very alive young boy from the circus inside. Crazy thing is, I can watch it on my phone. What is this? You saved me, he pants. Yeah, I was about to suffocate in there. The boy makes a beeline for his fellow performer's tent. This cactus doesn't look unusual <coughs> at first glance. You reach out and touch it, but it wiggles? Whoa. <laughs> you saw right through my disguise. I'm impressed, she says with a confident smile. She hurries back to her fellow performer's tent. Having found the remaining two performers the young man mentioned, you return to his tent. He thanks you warmly and makes way for the ringmaster's waiting caravan. blurts out. Well, legend has it that the Sand Prowler Czar is sealed in the sand ruins, Polka explains. Oh, okay. To hear there Polka tell it, the Sand Prowler Czar was a monster that once ruled this region through fear and despair. Oh. despair. And he's careful to note that some monsters still revere this Czar. If Polka's telling the truth, then you're holding something pretty dangerous. You figure it can't hurt to keep something so potentially valuable and slip it into your pack.
You sense another long polka lecture coming and start walking. You hear the sound of feet hurriedly whooshing through the sand as he tries to catch up. Those were just his feet, right? Yeah, had to be. <laughs> oh, well. Happen upon a tent pitched in front of some ruins. Might there be another performer within? You peer inside. Why, yes, the young girl you see before you may well be one of the performers, but she's rather tearful at the moment. Are you with the circus? Polka asks gently. The girl nods. Yes, beast tamer, circus, she says through her tears before begging for your help. Partner monsters swallow the Wading through the fragmented words. You gather that a monster swallowed her performing partner and ran off. She goes on to lament that this is all her fault as sobs rack her body anew. We have to help her, Polka says softly. There it goes. He declares that he cannot abide turning away from someone who's been separated from someone they care for. You're inclined to agree with him. So long as there are lives to be saved, you'll fight to save them. Yeah, boy. My sweet little girl, you must live. Are you okay? Legol asks carefully, you must sensing the grim pain. You nod and begin walking toward the ruins. <sighs> no one gets this chest first. Using it a lot. It's so good. Oh. All right, first of all. It's just trash. <coughs> you can have this trash. There we go. <coughs> Perfect. Oh, there it is. Bro, 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 bro. Maybe if I'm on the crossbow, I can start reloading my hip again. Sassy. What? Why is he attacking first? I don't like that one bit. No. Actually, wait a minute. Yes.
Ooh. Battle time. Like that. Both damage and put Carlos. Okie dokie. I don't really want to go that much faster because I go too fast. Oh. There it is, speed. Yeah, my speed's only one more. Because <coughs> mm -hmm. the 
she starts. Oh, you know what? But if I give it to him, he's already got plus four speed, so it'll be fine. Because then it's still going to be 12. Okay. This tech is much higher. Okay, perfect. I'm not going to pay attention, I need to, um... says suddenly. He begins tapping on the wall in several places, listening intently as he does so. There's nothing behind this wall, he says, pointing at one section of it. Not one to wait for permission. Legol strikes the right. section of wall with all his might. And what do you know? Polka was right. The wall concealed a hidden chamber. That's a scientist for you, Polka boasts, puffing out his chest. Science is awesome, you reply, jaw slack with wonder. Battle time. Ooh, what is this fun thing? Oh wow, that thing lived. Hmm. 
gonna be rough here in a second feel. Okay, it's gonna be It's gonna be Ralph. Get up. Get him. Get him. That's how it's Oh, could have gone better early today. I am so sleepy. My daughter got me up at like four and my son got me at three. I got very little sleep last night. Two. 
The door is shut tight. It has a keyhole, which suggests the existence of a key. Perhaps a wall could be broken? stops you. Wait a moment. That wall looks suspect, he says, before giving it a solid whack. Legol shakes his head. We should just break it down. He hits it with all his might. Nice. And with that, the wall crumbles, revealing, to your surprise, a hidden passage. You come across a weathered stone monument. The letters S-A-A-R are written on it. And there's a hollow where something clearly used to rest. Hmm. The area around the stone monument is littered with what appear to be monster bones. The whole thing feels ominous beyond words. But you dig around in your pack for something that might fit the monument's hollow. Oh, you insert. Operating on a hunch, you reach for the tarnished bangle you picked up earlier and slot it into the hollow. Fits perfectly. So, the sand prowler czar is sealed here. If I sit up more. Oh. Says, his voice quivering. The monster bones littering the site begin to rattle. It sure looks like you've awoken the sand prowler czar from its slumber. There's no getting out of this fight. The 
sand prowler czar is but a pile of bones once more, <sighs> its body thoroughly destroyed. The menacing energy you felt around the monument and Bangle has also vanished. Cracks form in the Bangle, their crooked fingers reaching up every which way through the monument. It crumbles to dust in seconds. A treasure chest peeks out from beneath the rubble. Might this be the Sand Prowler Czar's treasure? You fling the chest open with glee and find an exquisite accessory within. Ooh, bring it Interesting. Get him. You attempt to open the chest, Ooh. when suddenly, a band of cackling monsters appears from the shadows. It looks like they were using this chest as bait. They waste no time in surrounding you and attacking. Nice. Oh, my super attack. Let's do it. Get Don't us. Catch. Oh no, that was a lot. All the same, Polka picks it up and tucks it away, a pleased look on his face. One never knows when a key could come in handy. Let's take it, just in case.
The door is shut tight. It does, however, have a keyhole. You slide the simple key into the keyhole and turn it. There is a satisfying click as the lock opens. With a pleased look on his face, Polka thumbs his glasses back up on his nose. You swear you see something Ooh. move in the darkness. The three of you Ooh. carefully step toward whatever it is, this is fun thing. only to find it's, it's a, a monster. monster. It's big human teeth. Scale. Get up.
good. Something squirms in the worm's midsection. She did say the monster swallowed her partner. Polka whispers, not wanting to injure the very much alive entity inside. You carefully begin slicing into the worm's stomach. When oh, a, a rat pops out. You ventured oh, into the deepest part of the ruins, but there's no sign of the large monster or the girl's partner. What if the rat is her partner? You tilt your head in confusion, and the rodent scampers off out of sight. With no further leads to go on, you decide to return to the young girl for now, and tell her what you've found. Choose get me out now if you're in a hurry. Yeah. yeah you I'm all resolve to leave the sand ruins immediately. Let's take a shortcut. You emerge from the ruins in time to see the beast tamer leaping up and down. The rat you freed earlier gathered up in her arms. Thank. Partner safe. Happy. She squeals through tears of joy rather than sadness. Oh, isn't that lovely? Polka says, smiling. You've got slightly more complicated feelings about it. She's hugging a monster. The girl announces that she's off to rejoin the rest of the main troop and trots off with her companion in tow. The caravan is larger than it was when you left. Seems the troop members you rescued found their way back safely. The young man you rescued races over the moment he sees you. I found my way back. Thank you so much for saving me, he beams. The ringmaster is next in line peppering you with praise as he wrenches your entire arm up and down in a forceful handshake. He proudly announces that you can eat and drink your fill as a show of his gratitude. Oh, and he absolutely insists you see the show. He's certain finding yourself looking forward to the circus. You decide to invite Legol and Puka to come along, but they're nowhere to be found. It looks like they took off on their own, thinking it would be much more fun to go see the circus together. You decide to look for the pair. We're gonna pause here. I'll catch you What's up, comrades? Ciao. It's our new town we came to. It's not really new, but... You need to track the two of them down before the show starts. No more dark places. No more small spaces. The boy mumbles to himself. Sounds like his time in the treasure chest traumatized him. Yeah, no joke, jeez. You find Polka holding a cup with some kind of golden liquid in it. A gentle-looking woman seems to be teaching him something. The woman whips the monster and roars with laughter. This little fellow sees this as a reward. 
Polka nods along. Aha, I see. This is most instructive. You're not completely sure what you're looking at. You decide to drag Polka away and take him to the show. Free of her cactus cosplay, the woman now balances herself adroitly atop a monster. And as if that weren't impressive enough, they've only gone and synchronized their breathing as well. Our show is incredible, the ringmaster boasts. He really believes in it. The young man has once again buried himself in the sand from the neck down. It seems to be keeping him calm. You find Legol stuffing some kind of well-cooked meat into his mouth. Beside him is the beast tamer girl. When she notices you, she begins to thank you enthusiastically in crude language. However, your features harden when you see her looking lovingly at her monster partner. Seeing this, Legol asks, You need something? You invite Legol to come to the show and step away. You could hear the sounds of a lively crowd coming from the circus tent. The show must be about to begin. Stepping into the tent is akin to entering another universe. Clowns balance atop balls. Jugglers juggle objects with ease. Performers soar through the air on the trapeze. Your first circus show is infinitely more impressive than all the images you've conjured in your head. Unfortunately, you also find yourself too vexed to fully enjoy it. You cannot stop. The young boy makes a show of stopping his ball directly in front of you and holds something out to you. Which one of these do you like best? He asks with a wink. You point at the money, but the boy simply keeps smiling at you. He makes no effort to hand it over. The boy points to his own round nose. You stare intently at his nose, but nothing happens. He then points to his hand. You look down at your own hands and... What? The money is already in your hand. The boy smiles wryly at you. You cannot help but gaze at the prize that so wondrously found its way into your possession. The Beast Tamer is the next performer to take the stage. It seems she's going to put on some sort of monster show, as you'd expect. Though this time, she's joined not just by the rat, but other foul creatures. Watch teamwork do best. And just like that, the goodwill engendered by the young boy's gift evaporates, and your heart hardens anew. Monsters killed my family. The beast tamer, however, has no idea that you harbor such simmering resentment, and begins her show. 
Or she tries to, but one of the beasts begins raging out of control. Help! The ringmaster shouts in a panic. You instinctively grip your weapon and leap out of your seat to confront the monster. Do that much damage. The monster is nearly dead. You prepare to strike the killing blow, only for the beast tamer to leap between you and your prey. You unleash your fury upon the girl as she protects the monster. Why would you try to save this filthy beast? Hulka's eyes widen as she easily parries your attack. Listen, story, she says, hugging you so tightly you can hardly move. Beast Tamer tells you it was her fault the beast went berserk. She accidentally trod on its tail as she issued her command. It wasn't the monster's fault, she says. Tears well up in her eyes. It was her own inexperience. She begins to sob. The ringmaster peels her off you and gives you his heartfelt thanks for once again saving the circus. Allow me to introduce you. This is Trollis, he says. He follows up the introduction with yet another unexpected request. He wants Trollis to accompany you so she can further develop her skills. Apparently, the idea came to him as soon as he saw your masterful command of the beast in battle. Trollis, trembling, turns her gaze to you. You hesitate. That's a fantastic idea, bellows Polka, agreeing in your stead. The goal turns to Trollis. We're all talking around you. Is this what you want? Trollis thinks for a moment. Yes, train, she chirps, nodding emphatically. Sensing no way to push back against the overwhelming force of Polka and the Ringmaster, you agree to take Trollis along. She breathes frantically through her nose. Do best. Do best, she says eagerly. This is shaping up to be a fun journey, Polka says, 
visibly excited. Polka has apparently invited himself to join your crew. Legol starts to say something, but Polka is already so deep into a speech that he loses the will. We must celebrate the start of Trollis's training, the ringmaster shouts. Not a moment later, everything and everyone is in motion. The various performers jostle you about as they rush up to wish you the best and tell you to take good care of Trollis. As the dust settles, the performers settle to sleep wherever there happens to be space. You stealthily pack your belongings. You have to get out of here. This monster-loving circus just rubs you the wrong way. We wake Legol. You stop for a moment, realizing Legol has no obligation to accompany you. Maybe you should just let him. I'm awake, he whispers. You look more closely and see he too has packed his things. He must have known how you felt all along. The two of you agree to sneak out of the circus. You approach the exit to find Polka standing there, as though he were waiting for you. This is sure to be awkward. He approaches you. Can I tell you something? He asks, in a far more measured tone than you've ever heard from him. He begins to recount the story of his parents. They, too, studied monsters. One day, when Polka was very young, monsters attacked his village, killing his parents. His mother raced to get him to safety. She told him to run and began shouting, The monsters! There! That was when the flames took her. Polka tells you that he began studying monsters in the hopes of one day understanding what she was trying to say. He lowers his head and confesses that he needs your help in order to do so. You subterrans have the power I need to solve this mystery. I know it. You search his face. He's being sincere. You nod. Polka is no longer just someone you met, or just some scholar. He is you, an orphan. 
You tell Polka you'll help him once he answers one question. Does he hate monsters? Hatred reduces the mind's capacity for serious inquiry, he notes, his smile exposing gritted teeth. So, he's suppressing his hatred of them beneath a veneer of reason and logic. That'll do. Already leave, comes another voice. Your chatter must have woken Trollis. Her strength will serve us well. We should bring her with us, Polka adds, sensing your reluctance. Serve well, Trollis parrots, sweeping you off your feet. Thus were your defenses eroded and your ranks bolstered. You depart the circus with your new companions. Excellent. Strand and the desert heroes collapse in the heat. A young scholar of monsters finds them. Before long, they come upon a circus in the sand. They agree to search for the troops lost members. Which leads to most unusual lives. The beast never wishes to join them in their journey. As is a scholar, he's out to solve mystery from his past. Now a party of four heroes tied out to do. later dot 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 somehow your group finds themselves wandering in the desert yet again. You had no problem with letting Polka lead the way, but the sand skiff soon sailed headlong into quicksand and met with disaster. Frick well, that's not good. No use crying over spilt milk. Don't want to waste even a drop of moisture out here after all. Polka quips, holding a water canteen over his mouth and tapping it. You say in a flat tone, I don't get it. For perhaps the first time ever in your acquaintance, Polka refuses to elaborate. Don't make me explain it. Despite the rest of the group wasting away under the heat and grappling with brutal thirst, Trollis seems to have maintained some vigor. I look you water can smell weight. Indeed. Trollis's nose twitches as she sniffs at the air a bit. She picks up the scent of water to the north and heads off in that direction. Trust is now the only member of your party. 
Durability has been disabled. A musty smell wafts from the rocky area beyond. Maybe there could be some water there. No sooner does the thought cross Trollis's mind than a monster attacks from the shadows. Ooh, monsters. Get him. The rush of victory over the monster is short-lived, as there doesn't seem to be any water nearby. Muttering, water, Trollis stares at the defeated creature. The beast does seem to have a great deal of, mm -hmm. well, liquid. With a great squelchy squeeze, Trollis wrings the fluid out of the creature's body. Trollis returns to the sand skiff and helps everyone drink some of the slime juice. Mm, slime Each juice. in turn regains their vitality. The juice is faintly sweet and tasty. Polka asks, where'd you come by this stuff? However, Trollis's reply leaves something to be desired. Squeezed it. Everyone drank, everyone better. Polka inclines his head, deep in thought. But fruit is rare and hard to come by. The group decides to have Trollis lead them to where she located the sweet liquid. The group arrives at the place where Trollis obtained the liquid, but there seems to be nothing there. Did Trollis bring all of it back in one trip? As you mull your thoughts, Polka suddenly points. Look there. You take a closer look and see that there are cracks running through the rocks. They just might break open if hit with enough force. Lagol grunts in affirmation and then starts hitting the rocks. Over and over again, he pounds on them until blood oozes from his fist and flecks of it splatter the stones. With a cracking sound, the rocks break apart. You can continue on. 
Beyond the rocks, a barren waste stretches out before you. The party decides to press on through the arid expanse in hopes of finding a place to rest and eat. Wasteland. You've come across a river. Fire. A river that is somehow fully ablaze. There won't be any drinking this water. Polka's curiosity is piqued. He shouts, But water cannot burn. It defies scientific reason. Next to him, Trollis's nose twitches. She's evidently located something with her keen <coughs> sense of smell. There might be food nearby. The party opts to trust in Trollis's nose and heads off in the direction she indicates. You arrive in a city humming with life and bustle. There! Trollis practically falls over with excitement as she whips her hand out to point at the food stall. The stall is stacked high with fresh grilled meats, which are by all accounts the source of the smell she noticed. It's not just only at the food stall, but throughout the city, that people seem to make a living using fire. Perhaps that is why the place is sweltering. Polka cannot hold back his curiosity. I must inquire as to this comber and water, he says, zipping away. In fact, he zips off quickly enough that you and the others lose sight of him. Shrugging your shoulders, you decide to head off in search of him. I'll take a break here and get some ice cream. Right back.
Are you asleep over there? Sweet dreams. It's 50,000 gold pieces for the night, the voice sniffs as you enter the inn. Holy cow. Your jaw drops. Oh, I'm only kidding. My other business brings in so much coin, I let people stay for free, the innkeeper says, laughing heartily. You look around the building. But Polka is nowhere to be found. He probably didn't just decide to stay here, free or not. The woman is lost in thought as she gazes at the flames from a distance. Love and fire are rather similar, aren't they? You find her incomparable presence so overwhelming that you are unable to even ask about Polka. You ask the stall owner if they've seen a bespectacled young man, but they shake their head and say that there have been no customers of that description. Heat, heat, heat. He who has the heat controls everything. Heat is everything, the man shouts. <laughs> This city is hot enough as it is, but the man radiates fervor, making it all the hotter. You ask the man about Polka, and he replies in an encouraging tone. You'll find him. You will. It is essential that you never give up. What? Oh, this kid, no. I'm just never playing that game again. It's a waste of time. Da, da, da. 
this is gonna do double. deal attack plus five damage. Total damage for all is five. Okay, yeah, yeah. The young man is mumbling something. Listening carefully, you put the snatches of audible words together. It sounds as though he is unhappy about the local aristocrat. Apparently, said aristocrat is monopolizing the tinder water supply and reaping massive profits from it. You ask the lad about Polka, and he answers quickly, he ran off toward the pet shop. Man, let's just over at the pet shop. Get out of here. Blow my money buying new weapons and stuff. Ugh, gross. I'm sorry, you're gonna make chili next weekend? I thought you were making it. Correct. No, but that's the thing we do for the conference, and you're not going to be here for the uh, second weekend, so I might as well just do it this weekend, and I can just, maybe I can just make like a giant batch and just freeze some of it, and then just warm it up for this thing. I don't have to even make it again. Hmm. Then... Oh, I don't want that. I do want that. old woman offers cautionary words. You Ooh, best be primal. careful. The flame primal dwells in the lake of fire. You ask the woman about Polka, and she replies, why, he and I were speaking until just a short while ago. He's probably still nearby. You thank the woman and take your leave. You stand before a handsome mansion whose occupant is assuredly possessed of abundant worldly means. In layman's terms, they're loaded. It doesn't seem likely that Polka is here. Try looking elsewhere for now. There he is. You locate Polka in a state of considerable excitement as he observes a burning pond. He notices you a moment later and starts chattering rapidly. This town is incredible. They use this combustible water as an energy source to make their living. And what's more, he goes on without taking a breath. It doesn't sound like his rambles are anywhere close to finished. But then... Wow, wow. Suddenly, the sound of children weeping reaches your ears. It sounds like it's coming from a back alley. Do, do, there. In the back alleyway, two emaciated children stand alone, with naught but the clothes on their backs. They look to be orphans. Oops. Not uncommon in big cities like this. Down the voice phase the goal says. Something akin to a vice grips your heart, and you wonder if there is some way you can help them. What will you do for the orphans? You hit upon an idea. 
Why not ask the aristocrat making huge profits from the tinder water for assistance? A well-dressed man of clear sophistication and means emerges from the manor, and he seems willing to listen to you. You bring up the plight of the city's orphans. The man listens to your story and then hangs his head. I would love to do something, truly, I would. But you see, my own child, he explains that his son is bedridden stricken with an illness of unknown origin. The aristocrat's mind seems fully preoccupied with thoughts of his own child. Persuade him. You appeal to the man's better nature, tears welling up in your eyes. In reply, he sheds a single tear of his own. Would that I were a better man the sort who could prioritize orphans over my own flesh and blood. At a loss, you look over at Polka. He catches your glance and then offers to examine the aristocrat's child. Polka explains that he has some medical knowledge and the man practically leaps on him, desperate enough to cling to any ray of hope. It looks as though Polka will be performing an impromptu medical exam. According to Polka, the aristocrat's child has been poisoned. The man's jaw falls open. At? That cannot be. My household employs silverware that reacts to poison in food. What could be the cause? You suggest the possibility that the child may have picked up and eaten something they found lying around outside. Could well be, Legol agrees, a mysterious look on his face. However, the aristocrat vehemently denies oh, the possibility. Yeah, look at that. You suggest like the possibility that there could be a venomous monster nearby. At this suggestion, the aristocrat blurts out the flame primal. It exudes a toxic gas. Polka explains that if the source of the poison was indeed somehow the flame primal, it might be possible to craft an antidote from its body. And then, as though struck by an idea, okay. he adds, ah, and perhaps as a thank you for my doing so, we might discuss aid for the poor orphans of the city? Yes, of course. Seeing the aristocrat's immediate response, you can't help but be astonished by Polka's wisdom and negotiating skill. Upon leaving the manor, Polka explains, with no small amount of pride in his voice, my own investigations indicate that the flame primal is in the lake of fire to the northwest of the city. It seems like his running about all over the city wasn't for nothing. All right, let's go do that. Yeah, go clean my car. Here we go.
get burned. Polka warns, don't breathe too deeply here. The very air could be noxious poison. here. My leg is bothering me. Who's up there?
Ugh, boo. Target and recover HP, nice. You pick up a scrap of paper you spot by your feet. Against all odds, it hasn't burnt to ash. It appears to be part of a crudely drawn treasure map. A sketched treasure chest lies between a lake, white mountains, and rocky crags. A treasure map! Everyone shouts at you in unison. You slip the scrap of paper into your pack and make a mental note to keep an eye out for the location the doodle depicts. Check your treasure map. bar the path. That said, it doesn't look like they've noticed you yet. They probably don't see many humans around here, given that the lake is surrounded by fire. They're completely oblivious. Taking care to be as quiet as possible, you steal close to the monsters and attack them. To battle! Get lucky. The monsters don't attack. In fact, they look like they're trying to find an opening to make a run for it.
terrible to this. Battle time. Yeah. 